special mercy. You know, I quoted that verse yesterday, what's it, 1857, that uh, Krishna says that there's never going to be a devotee who's more dear to me than one who explains the supreme secret to the other devotees. Huh? There is no more dear servant, and there never will be a more dear servant than him. So uh, this means Krishna gives extra special mercy to those who preach and serve his devotees. Uh, to, and especially if we serve them in such a way that helps them develop their Krishna consciousness. This is what Krishna wants. This is how you become dear to Krishna. If you really want to become advanced in Krishna's service, then serve his devotees very nicely in such a way that they become advanced in Krishna consciousness. Uh, if you can do this, then the path to spiritual perfection is wide open. Uh, this is the secret. But on the other hand, if we create anxiety for the devotees, if we create trouble for the devotees, if we create unnecessary difficulties for the devotees. See, this is why my god brothers fell down. Because they accepted a political solution instead of a spiritual solution to the uh, problem of how to manage ISKCON. They created so much anxiety for the devotees, so much unnecessary trouble for the devotees, uh, so much political uh, agitation and other nonsense. And because of this, Krishna looked at that and, and he said, well, these, they're not helping my devotees. They're not serving my devotees nicely. They're causing artificially uh, problems for my devotees. So why should I give them special mercy? Huh? So we, around here, we, we call this... Uh, serving the devotees, we call this the extra credit course. Huh? Like we have so many courses on the university site. Uh, you can work through all these courses from, from raw neophyte bhakta all the way up to sarva bhoma, you know, acharya of the whole world. <laughs> what other university can you, can you go to all those courses? But even if you graduate from all those courses, if you don't apply that knowledge to help the other devotees, you won't be able to make it. It doesn't matter what your academic qualifications are. Academic qualifications are important, but applying them is even more important. Uh, so what really matters is the cleanliness of our hearts. Uh, beginning from not committing sinful activities, through not making any offense against the holy name, and worshiping the deity very nicely without any offenses, and finally, to become free from offenses to all other living entities, <coughs> especially the devotees. Uh, and most of all, to serve the devotees and help them to advance in spiritual life. This is the qualification for the highest stage of devotional service. And just see, you cannot imitate this. Uh, I have some god brothers. There was one god brother. He has a, a name that's kind of similar to mine. And he was going on the internet uh, and, and YouTube and all of that and putting up videos of his preaching and he's claiming to be self-realized. And actually, I think he was kind of ripping us off. He was like trying to do like the same line or the same, the same kind of style of preaching, you know. But it just came out. Oh, so he got in so much trouble. Everybody was writing him like, <laughs> "Stop posting this nonsense! Come on, you know you're not qualified." You know that. Ah. Yeah, he was getting so much static from everybody because he was trying to like, he was trying to like impress and you could see very easily that he was trying to impress other people, especially other devotees. And, uh, you know, that doesn't work because devotees 
any, any devotee who's been around for a little while knows what a service attitude is. <laughs> and you better have a service attitude if you want to get anywhere with a, an experienced devotee because they know that this service attitude is the key to spiritual advancement. They may not always be able to manifest that attitude themselves, but at least they know. Huh? But people who aren't devotees or who have very limited knowledge of devotional service, they don't understand this. They're still there trying to solve their problems. Huh? I want friends. I want money. I want respect. I want uh, people to look up to me. I want uh, to be influential. I want to have some power. I want some fame. I want this. I want that. Huh? But this is, this is the neophyte stage of devotional service. Krishna says, four kinds of pious men surrender unto me. Yeah. Those who are in distress, those who are in need of money, those who are curious, and those who are in knowledge. And of those four, the one in knowledge is dear to me, because I am dear to him. So what he's saying here is that the other three are more or less neophytes. They're more or less licking the outside of the bottle. Huh? We have this story we tell about. You have a jar of honey. Huh? And it says right on the cover, it says, honey, sweet honey. Right? Oh, great, sweet honey. I can taste this. And you start licking the bottle. Huh? Well, what are you going to taste? You're only going to taste the glue on the label. That's all you're going to taste. <laughs> You have to open the jar and go inside, and then you can taste the sweet. Similarly, in devotional service, to simply approach on an external platform and try to imitate what other devotees are doing, well, that's, it's probably a good start, better than nothing. But the real path of devotional service is completely internal. It's completely based on knowledge, transcendental knowledge, not ordinary knowledge, and purity of heart. So without these two qualifications, transcendental knowledge means knowledge from the scriptures, and purity of heart means that you cleanse all the sinful reactions, all the materialistic desires, all the offenses, all the misunderstandings, all the doubts. Huh? Like the last few days around here, we've been cleansing doubts. It's like, come on, where's your doubts? Huh? Bring them out, come on. And resolving all of these doubts. Because if you don't resolve your doubts, how can you go on ahead with full confidence? Huh? We're about to go on this, you know, big long journey, like halfway across the planet, and meet all these people that we've never met before, and. Uh, have this big powwow and this big meeting and this big ceremony and all this stuff and oh man I mean this is a big operation and then we're going to go to India and we're going to be setting up a, a corporation and a, a charitable trust and all this stuff and getting land and doing this and building houses and oh man I mean we're getting set to do this huge endeavor. So we can't have anything holding us back. We can't have any doubts holding us back. We have to have full faith, full confidence to go ahead with this very ambitious, uh, very, well, it's not really risky, but it's, just, it's complicated. There's a lot of little details that we have to take care of so that everything works properly, you know? And, I mean, we're probably going to make some mistakes. You know, we always we have the same experience. This, we, we've done this three times now. Huh? In Mexico, in Chile. Huh? And now we're going to go to India and do it again. And, yeah, we're, we're getting better at it. Coming into a foreign country, scoping out the, the landscape. Where do we want to be located? Huh? What do we want to, how do we want to live? How are we going to supply ourselves? Yeah, we have really, we've gotten a lot more mobile, a lot lighter. And, you know, but we, it's still like our whole trip is more than you can carry on an airplane. <laughs> we have to ship uh, at least, no? Really? Well, except the kitchen stuff and like that. Yeah. 
but all of the all of the media production equipment and all that stuff we can pack up in boxes and take with us on the plane. So that's very cool. Mobile production. Yeah. Huh? Mobile production adventure. Oh, I see. Okay. So uh, anyway, so we're going to do this. We're going to go to India. So we have to be we have to be able to go with full confidence that at least, you know, we may make some mistakes because of lack of knowledge, but at least we're not going to have a problem with lack of integrity or lack of trust, see, or lack of surrender or holding back because we're not sure, well, is this really the, is this really the truth? Is this really going to work, you know? Uh, we have to have that full confidence to go ahead and just get the job done because there's very little time left. I'm telling you, by the end of the year, you're going to be going, 